not other organisms, but you can actually use hardware and bird and human. <coughs> you could use that and say that one example is, is their selection for or against uh, uh, can you use in humans that would be totally random. How about blood type? Sometimes you don't know what the blood type is of your mate, so that's random. That's for if you're looking at blood type, uh, because nobody really asked that question. So obviously, uh, that's not a factor in choosing a mate. So we can look at things that are not seen that will be, we can say random mating, but you, you're not looking at that particular entity. So random must be true. Death rate yeah. equals birth rate. And number three, Immigration must equal immigration. Let me say it another way. No one, no individual leaves the population. Number four, no individual enters the population. Let's say number five, um, population must be large. So it can't be a small population. This room would be considered a small population. If we go to a campus like uh, Vanderbilt, UT, or TSU, where there is a really large population of someone, um, uh, just the population gene frequency is not affected by a sudden loss of one or two individuals. So <coughs> it must be very, very large. So while we're on that topic, how would you determine the frequency of males in this room? Just a general question. How would you determine the frequency of males in this room? Or how would you determine the percentage of males in this room? One degree, no. Or what would be the um, fraction, Cindy, that you mentioned that, of males in this room? How would you determine that? What would be the first thing that you would have to do? Count the males and females. You have to count everybody in the room. And so you, it wouldn't be any guessing at all. You have to know the total. And then, now you know what fraction of males because you count the males in over the total. Obviously, what's left would be the number of females. And that's the way we could do genes to determine the frequency. Count the number of big A's and little A's in the population. Now, everybody's got two, so but you've got to count all of them. And then, uh, literally, count the dominant ones, just one letter, and put it over the total of alleles. So you have to know the total number of alleles in the population. And yeast, all organisms are haploid, so that would be relatively easy to do. But if you're dealing with a population of diploids, every individual will have two. And so my question usually is around the software, and we'll do a problem like that before we, uh, before we leave. Um, so when you're doing a Hardy-Weinberg problem, you should be able to calculate the number of alleles in the, in the room. And based that it is random made or not, um, then you work from there. Um, and let me give you a couple of words to look up, if you will. Bottleneck. You want us to look these up in front of me next week? Maybe we'll talk about them next week. Bottleneck and um, let's focus on that one for now. What does that mean? And of course, that's a genetic term. So if you look it up in Webster Dictionary, you'll probably get something weird. 
But on a genetics book, it, may, it has a specific definition. Okay. So, P, P squared plus 2P cubed plus Q squared. That's the formula that we normally use for Hardy Weinberg. That is based on that formula where P would be equal to big A, Q would be little a. Of course, the 2PQ, that would be big A, little a. Q would be little a, little a. Q squared, I'm sorry. And P squared would be big A, big A. So 2PQ would be the heterozygote big A, little a. So generally when we're using this formula, P would be the dominant allele, Q would be the recessive allele, and also part of this formula, P plus Q equals 1. P plus Q equals 1. And that's a rule. If you add up all, if you, if you know the total of P's and Q's, or if you only knew one of them, you should be able to, if you knew the frequency of one, you can get the frequency of the other. So let's look through this. Let's go through this and see if we can see how a problem will work. If we, let's see if we can do a problem, we can say that big A, Big A equals uh, 105. Did you bring your calculators with you? Yes, sir. Okay. Big A, little a, could equal, let's say, 225. And little a, little a would equal, let's say, uh, 50. So if you went through a calc uh, population and you could score this, uh, big A, big A, and get the number, uh, big A, little a, and little a, little a. And so, what's the total? What is the total of this? 380. 380. So that's the total number of individuals in the population. So you got a total of 380 individuals in the population. How many alleles do I have in the population? How many alleles do we have in the population? Would that be doubling the total? Yeah. No. 760? Do I hear more? The double, double the oh, total? Because three, three, three. everybody's got two, right? Right. Okay. So I could say this would be 210. And that would be 450, right? And that would be 100. If I add them all up, uh, I should come to 760. 760. So that's the number of alleles in the population. So here's the question. What's the frequency of the little a? What is the frequency of little, little a? What is the frequency of little a? How would you do it? Tell me how you would do it. 15.2. How about 225 plus 100 divided by 760? How did I get that? I don't know. You took half of the middle and then the double and then the little Yeah. I have 100 little A's in that, in that problem. Oh, because it's Right? And how many? Little a's do I have in the heterozygote? I got uh, 450 all total, James. But how many are little a's? How many little a's are in this population? Because the other one, this is 225, and that's 225. But I, the question is, how many little a's? So it would be 225. Right. 